This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to show you how to scale your dog's teeth at home. Hi you guys, welcome again and back to my channel. This edition was inspired by a recent trip that I had to the dentist. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a long story. You know, I've had a variety of dental issues, I had an old filling I replaced with the crown. The crown broke. It left this giant big pocket. You don't actually need to see it in the video. Um, but what it did does mean is that it, food gets trapped and it's quite the extensive amount of scaling that's involved, but primarily hand scaling that's involved with cleaning that, that tooth and cleaning my teeth. Um, so the big point and the big part of this video is there's a number of you who've asked and I mean, they're sent in emails, etc. You know, can you show me some, show me a little example of how I could be doing some dental care on my dog or my cat at home? So, should you be doing dental care on your pet? Well, clearly, there's some of the basic, simple things which I've discussed in terms of ideally you doing some form of regular brushing. Um, you're looking at some diet modification, feeding. I'm a big advocate of, of using bones, especially the big knuckle bones and ones that you can where your dog can't crunch them off, you're just using them, gnawing on them, really nice and abrasive. I find those are very helpful for minimizing tartar. Lewis, my dog, is going to be a great example here. But in this, this part of the video, what I actually want to show you is how I just do a basic hand scaling, similar to how you would have a scaling done at your dentist on my own dog. And by doing that, Lewis has never had to have general anesthesia to have a dental scale and polish. She's age of 13, she's got pretty darn good teeth. Um, so you can see what I do and, you know, maybe take some of this video and apply it to your own dog. So the first thing, you guys, I'm going to bend over. I'm trying to get Lewis in the video and get a bit of a close-up of his mouth. Is, you know, firstly, you're just doing a good thorough examination of your dog's mouth and their teeth. Um, you, if I'm lifting up Lewis's lips, lower back, lips back here, his molars are way at the back where my middle finger is. Uh, then he's got this big, big premolar here called the upper fourth premolar, or the carnasial tooth. Uh, it's a common one uh, for dental issues. It's one where our dogs will really chew and crack, you know, if they're trying to chunk into a piece of bone. Um, some other premolars that go all the way along to here. Um, there's this big tooth here, the canine tooth. It's got a moderate amount of plaque, a little bit of tartar on it. Then these little teeth in front, the incisors. Uh, they're not near so important, but they can also get plaque and tartar and different amounts of gum disease. Um, so in this section of the video, I'm just gonna show you, I, I have a couple of different dental instruments here. Uh, essentially, these are hand scalers, similar to what your own dentist would be using on yourselves. And this, I mean, this is what we would use in veterinary practice in part of scaling. It's a combination, it can be a combination of hand scaling, with an ultrasonic scaler followed up with polishing. Yes, ideally, you know, if your dog has moderate to serious amounts of dental disease, obviously it's ideal that you're going into seeing your veterinarian, you're having a full dental scale and polish. Um, but my experience is the majority of, of clients are not doing that, primarily for, because of cost. So they're just leaving those teeth, getting completely covered in tartar, we're getting extensive periodontal disease, that's leading to having the, your dogs being in unnecessary pain and having to have these teeth extracted. So I really think a real sort of medium way around approaching this is having you guys doing some of this at home, especially if you're in a point where you can't afford to have a full-on dental. So I'm gonna show you with Lewis here, and as I said, there's a number of different types of scalers. Um, these are ones, I said, which we would use, I would have used at the veterinary clinic. And what I'm going to do, and, and the big thing you want to focus on is getting that tartar off of that tooth, um, but right at the level of the gum line. Because that's where we're actually seeing the inflammation. We're seeing the gingivitis, which is called gum inflammation. And then we'll see recession and called, or periodontal disease, where we see plaque builds up to tartar. And that's the main issue that we're trying to avoid and potentially you can deal with. The bulk of the tartar all happens on the outside of the tooth. The inside of the to teeth generally stay pretty clean because the action of chewing, the action of your dog's tongue. So it's the outside one that you need to focus on. So I think you can see me here. So this is Lewis here. 
So I've just got his lips open. And I'm just scraping the outside of that tooth. And I'm just scraping. I'm starting out not an, under the gum line. I'm starting on the top of the tooth. Uh, sort of at the, at the bottom down here. The one which is closest to his mouth. And I'm just going to scrape that tartar. Working my way right up to the level of the gum line. I generally like to scrape, you know, down. So I'm just scraping that tartar out and down. And I think you can hear it there just coming off. That is tartar that's coming off of that. That's his, that big tooth, that carnesial tooth that we talked about. A couple other things you may want to have on hand. You know, here I have some gauze, a little bit of water. So it's also normal to expect a little bit of bleeding right at the gum line. And because what I've done is taking that fairly sharp instrument, which has got to be, to help scrape off some of that tartar and go just underneath Lewis's gum line. Um, not every dog is going to let you do this. And Lewis is especially compliant. Um, what I have found um, for some people, it helps to try it at the end of the day when your dog is tired after a whole bunch of exercise. Um, I've had other people um, try some of the other things that I've discussed for anxiety, stuff like rescue remedy, um, that other people put in lavender just to try to deal with, make their dog less anxious. I had one pet owner I heard they actually were using, found it worked pretty well to using uh, antihistamine, Another person wrote in, told me that actually they had some really good good luck using valerian. So they're you know calming their dog first with valerian, then getting in uh, with a with a dental instrument to scrape up some of that tartar. So let's just do an example here. I'm going to go up on Lewis's. Go play Lewis. So he's got a uh, premolar here. It's but his second upper second premolar. So I've just got once again this small dental scaler here. I think you guys can see it in the video. So I'm just first starting on the outside of the tooth. Towards you know, right here. Right here at the bottom of the tooth, closest to the tongue. And then I'm going just being very gentle, trying to just go underneath this gum line. See if I'm getting that tartar out. Go boy, Lewis. As I said, most of the problems, so when we're doing a dental in practice, we're really focused on y'all you know, getting that tartar that you see, but especially focused on what's happening under the gum line, because that's where we've got the bacteria. So we got plaque, turns into tartar, which causes the inflammation. Good boy, Lewis. You're actually being very patient. He's got so little tartar. He might up here on his upper this big upper canine tooth and there's virtually nothing coming off. Good boy. Got a, definitely got a good chunk off of that carnasial tooth. I think back here he's got a molar. Try to get a bit off here. It can be harder to get in the back of your dog's teeth. And you actually feel it when the tooth is actually smooth and you're scraping that off and then all of a sudden it, you can feel this nice clean scrape there's nothing abrasive so then you've gotten rid of the tartar that was present so then he said after that i'll use like a gauze i've got here soak in a little bit of water wipe that tooth then after especially for this okay boy lewis for the sake of being thorough you can then just look at um, finishing up with some type of antiseptic rinse um, if anything we're just trying to minimize the inflammation that's happening on that on those gums, and you know, being especially thorough, I mean, getting rid of, getting rid of as much bacteria as possible. You know, so here, so this is called this is chlorhexidine, which is that uh, the one antiseptic that I've discussed in the past. And I'm just gonna wipe, just wipe it along. You can either flush it in with, flush, flush it right into the gum line, but I've just put it on a gauze. I'm just gonna wipe his sort of upper part of his teeth and his gum line further decreasing some of that inflammation there, Lewis. Especially where the gums are a bit more sensitive after I've gone ahead and scraped them. So that's sort of the basic, you know, how you're just using some type of scaler, 
some type of veterinary scaler such as this. You can get a whole, get them all over the place via the internet. And I want to use a basic one, one that's not especially too fine, one that's not especially too thick. You can get a combination of ones if you want, but one that can sort of scrape the, the tartar right off the boat, the main body of the tooth, but then also get you just underneath that gum line to deal with that extra inflammation just under there. And you just want to be careful when you're going under that gum line because it is really tender and sore. You're feeling, you know, as the tooth, as it, you're going to feel it as you run that instrument along the tooth. You're going to feel where it ends, where it's tucked up and where you actually got the tooth. There's no longer any pocket of gum tissue. Um, but you want to just be tender period because just knowing it, as I can speak from my own experience, it's really painful when you're getting underneath that gum line. You've got a lot of tartar and you've got these inflamed, flamed gum tissues. Um, obviously not every dog, we said earlier, is going to let you do this. Start small, maybe just start it with one tooth. Um, and it also, I think, helps to start when your dog is younger. But regardless, you know, if you've got a dog in need of dental care, you're unable to afford a, vet, a visit to your veterinarian, you could consider this. Thank you for watching this edition of NRE Secrets. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above that can subscribe you to my channel. Then you can go ahead, click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.